Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, welcome to Dare to Dream. Beautiful people, today I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Susan Shumsky, who is a best-selling, award-winning author, spirituality expert, pioneer in self-development, professional speaker, and a doctor of divinity. The Dare to Dream podcast won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards, won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, Walt Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under self-improvement in Apple Podcasts. I cannot tell you people how many times I have somebody tell me they join my class, for instance, and at some point I'll say, where did you find me? Oh, I've been listening to your podcast. And... And I'm like, well, leave a comment, <laughs> subscribe, like, leave a comment. You may not realize how very important that is to the matrix of what I do and specifically why that is important because we are living in very auspicious times. And I want this conversation to get into the hands, the eyes, the ears of those who desire this conversation are hungry for the information. The more you like, the more you leave comments, the more YouTube, Spotify, all the various platforms I'm on, pick it up and say, oh, we know people who are into cutting edge met metaphysics, extraterrestrial, shamanism, spirituality. Let's send them this podcast. So please, you're doing our community, our tribe a favor by doing so. Membership is available on the YouTube site. Please sign up. And I want to tell you that my Gaia TV interview is now live. So head over to Gaia TV and watch under George Norrie's Beyond Belief TV show, my interview on shamanism and extraterrestrials. Thank you to Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness for being the sponsors to the show. If you'd like to find out more about the energy work they do, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R, Dot com. And I've got a new gift I just put together. I'm very excited and proud of this. It is a Starseed report and video. It is my gift to you. And the URL is in the show notes. So be sure to check it out on my Galactic Shaman website. It is a Starseed video. It is a Starseed report and it breaks down many different star seeds. You can learn your galactic origin, your mission, your purpose, your gifts, and sometimes your weakness. This is my cosmic digital gift to you. Go in the show notes and click on that link. My guest today is Dr. Susan Shumsky. She's a highly respected spiritual teacher and best-selling author of 20 plus books in English, 40 in foreign editions. She has won 46 prestigious book awards and Susan is a pioneer in the human potential field. She has taught meditation, prayer, affirmation and intuition to thousands worldwide for many decades. Dr. Shumsky is the founder of Divine Revelation, a unique field-proven technology for contacting the divine presence, hearing and testing the inner voice, and receiving clear divine guidance since 2011, Dr. Shumsky has produced over 20 very successful holistic conferences on cruise ships. Her next seminar at sea is the Galactic Origins Cruise to be held December 14th to the 21st this year, sailing from Orlando, Florida to the Riviera Maya. I will be one of the presenters on this cruise as well as I think 20 or 25 other outstanding presenters. Highly recommended. That link will also be in the show notes. And you can find Dr. Shumsky at drsusan.org. And with that, I welcome Dr. Susan Shumsky to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you back. It's been a couple of years. I'm glad you're here. I'm thrilled to be here with you today, Debbie. What a pleasure. 
And I can't wait for December with you. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> it really is. Like, it's no joke going to the Yucatan and all of these sacred sites. I mean, plus the adventures being at sea and having folks like you and many others deliver these incredible presentations. And I understand this is a luxury liner. This is a no joke kind of ship that we're going to be on. Yes, we're going to be on the Celebrity Equinox, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic high end. It's one of what's called premium category liner. And we're going to be going to these amazing places. We'll go to Cozumel. That's one of the port stops. And that uh, Tulum is where we'll be visiting the ancient ruins of Tulum. And that will be led by uh, J.J. and Desiree Hurtak, uh, who wrote an, a fantastic book called Keys of Enoch, very famous metaphysical book. They've been in the field for decades and decades, and they do have some expertise in the ancient sites in Mexico. So they'll be guiding us at Tulum. And also we're going to be stopping in Honduras, which I'm really excited to visit the Garifuna uh, indigenous culture there and uh, to visit their village and make bread with them. And it's going to be amazing. And then we're going to also go to Belize to an amazing site where we're going to go on a river cruise. And in the jungle, there's this very, not very kind of hidden site that's fantastic. Wow. And uh, we're also going to go to uh, uh, to Costa Maya, where we have the ruins of Chacobin. And at the Seven Color Lagoon nearby there, we're going to be doing a ancient, authentic Maya fire ceremony with Grandmother Elizabeth Araujo. Mm -hmm. So that's... <laughs> That'll be a highlight of our shore excursions. Oh my. And uh, where else will we be going? Um, I think that might be it. May uh, I ask oh, no, you? No, 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 it's not it. We're also, uh, after the cruise, we're going to go to the NASA Kennedy Space Center. And we're going to go to this astronaut for a day program. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious. I worked for a considerable amount of time in my younger years at JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA, and KSC, Kennedy Space Center, one of our sister um, oh facilities. Yeah. Uh, so I have never been there. I am really excited. And I will say my sister-in-law moved from New York to Florida, she and my brother, and if I were to visit her, even without you guys, she said, this is the most amazing experience at Kennedy Space Center. She said, and it takes a lot to impress me, but she said, it is so phenomenal to go. So I know I'm in for that. And then uh, Do Dr. Elizabeth, will you say, what do you know what her lineage is? As yes. is she, She's a shaman, I assume, or a medicine woman. Yes, uh, Grandmother Elizabeth Araujo is from the Council of Maya Elders in Guatemala. She actually is from Guatemala. Wow. And she has uh, done fire ceremonies on many of my cruises. And uh, she's really fantastic. It's wonderful to experience one of these fire ceremonies. Oh, my God. I'm very excited. I did. We did a lot in our uh, when I was in shaman program for seven months and now I do them. I keep, I keep it going here, but I have to say, I can't wait to meet her. She's one of the ones I'm really looking forward to because this is the work I'm involved in. So okay. any beautiful elder grandmother like that doing this kind of work coming from an indigenous culture. And I know that she's been appointed by her people and by lineage and spirit. Um, she must be quite extraordinary. She is <laughs> yeah. very so, humble, very lovely grandmother. And Dr. JJ and Desiree Hurtak led me. We all spoke, the three of us, in Mexico City at the World Ufology event. 
And they took us on a tour of Teotihuacan, Teotihuacan, which is an ancient, famous, famous pyramid. Um, There's so much I could say about that. I will say that having JJ and Desiree lead us on the tour was made it incredibly special. The knowledge they have is unlike most people walking the planet and the science base, they can also imbue it with besides the spirituality and the ancient knowledge. So it's going to be an honor to be with them on this also visit of the ancient site in Tulum. I've never been to any of these places before, so I'm chomping at the bit, (laughs) but I know December will come soon enough. And Just we'll revisit this later before we get into you, but I do want to ask you, since you're here and you're the go-to person, Susan, how soon should people book this? Because I know I've had people express interest like through the show, but they haven't booked it yet. Although I have had some bookings under my name. What is the timeline for this? You know, I started uh, presenting seminars at sea in 2011. And back then, you could book onto a cruise ship up until the day before the cruise without any problem. The cruises were never sold out. However, since the pandemic, Hmm. the cruises are tending to sell out anywhere from four months in advance to two months in advance. Once a cruise is sold out, it's very difficult to get onto the ship. You can get onto the ship simply because it's a big ship. And so passengers cancel. And when passengers cancel, then rooms will pop up in inventory, even though it's sold out. However, as soon as a ship becomes sold out, the prices skyrocket. Mm -hmm. So not only is it difficult for our travel advisor, travel agent to get us onto the ship, but also the prices are way high. So, but in the within the next month, the prices are going to be stable. I hope. Uh, the reality is that a cruise uh, line can take your rooms, can take back, or it's called recall your rooms at any time. So even though we have a block of rooms mm. on the ship, mm. they can recall it if they start to get tight in their inventory. So I would recommend that you book now. (laughs) If you really want to go on this cruise, you had better do it now. (laughs) Yeah. And you don't want to be the one sitting back and watching our pictures on social media and hearing people rave about the sites and the presentations and the connections made and the food. For those of you who are into food, um, there's going to be so much to look forward to. This is going to put the most beautiful end to an incredible year. And I would say, let's do it together aboard a ship. So thank you for that. That was important information. Okay. Also, also yeah. it's important to know that Celebrity, as I said, is a premium cruise line. The food on Celebrity is exquisite, is <laughs> really fantastic. And also it's a part of the Royal Caribbean uh, family of cruise of of, uh, liners and Royal Caribbean happens to have the best entertainment at sea. And I'm saying that with authority simply because I've sailed on so many of the different lines and the Royal Caribbean uh, cruise line, um, their family of cruises has absolutely the best entertainment. So if you want to go to a show at night or go to the comedy, comedy show or comedy club or go to, a dance club or whatever, it's really going to be really great quality. Mm. And you won't, you won't be some dumb, you know, there's some, there's some cruise lines that do kind of really not very great, cheesy, yeah. Entertainment. Not this one. This is very good, very sophisticated. And also there's things uh, that are really nice about celebrities, such as the solarium, which is an adults only pool and spa oh. and oh. Um, jacuzzi. Mm. And, and, you know, that's one of my favorite places to hang out on a cruise ship. <laughs> nice. Oh, I like that. There's sorry, family people, but I do like for something like this, no kids allowed. Um, 
you mentioned the food and I know Neil, our event producer, he said something to me, I think last year he was in Mexico City with JJ Desiree and I, and he said to me something like there's a five-star hotel and it's part of the package. You don't have to pay extra. Is that correct? That's not correct. <laughs> not correct. Okay. What the is hotel, that? Yeah, we, we have reservations in a hotel uh, to stay in before or after the cruise, if you wish. Mm. And you, And when you register for the cruise on the registration form, you just click on the link and that takes you straight to the hotel which is a uh, hotel uh, at Cocoa Beach, actually, is where it is. And it's um, Hampton Hotel, Hampton Inn. So, uh, yeah, you can book your hotel right then and there, the same time that you register for the cruise. Or you can do it later, it doesn't matter. But, you know, don't take t too long because... Once again, we only have a block of rooms. We only have a limited number of rooms. And once those sold out, that means you're going to have to pay the high, higher, much higher price. Don't do that to yourself. To <laughs> save, save your money for a massage or something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's another thing you can do on a cruise ship. They have an entire spa facility. So you can get appointments for massage. You could also take fitness classes. Uh, they have all various uh, categories of different spa treatments, not only massage, but facials, whatever you want. You know, they have a beauty salon also. Susan. And the link, folks, is galacticoriginscruise.com. We'll also be in the show, note, show notes, but so simple. Galacticoriginscruise.com. When you register there. for that cruise, Absolutely. Uh, you're going to be asked where you heard about the cruise. Absolutely put Debbie Dashinger in the uh, field there where they're asking you who told you about the cruise. And by the way, Debbie's name will be right there. You'll see it right there. So that's that's what you put in the box. <laughs> and they've made it so easy. You actually, you don't even have to spell my name. They have, it's clickable. So you'll see all the presenters' names. Just remember there's two Debbies. I'm the D-E-B-B-I, like ribeye steak, D-E-B-B-I, and Dashinger, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. I'm so excited. I've already had people listen to the show say, I booked because of you. And I can't wait to meet you. And I'm like, I can't wait to meet you too. This is going to be so exciting. Oh, it's so fun on a ship mm. because we get to meet like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is we have the opportunity to have dinner with our favorite speakers oh. or go to the bar with them or where, whatever we want to do. We hang out with these people that we only see up on a stage or we see at an expo standing at the podium. Now we get to actually hang out with them, get to know them on a personal level. We'll be dining together every night. And if you wish, it's not compulsory for you to attend the group dining, but it's a lot of fun to do that because you can meet new people every night. You will not have an assigned seat uh, on a lot of cruise ships. You, uh, they, they, uh, it's compulsory for you to have an assigned seat. Uh, we have our own tables. We'll have our own designated area in the oh, dining room. That's great. And then it's called round robin dining. That means you can sit anywhere you want within the designated area. Oh. So we get to meet new people every night, if you wish. Um, just <laughs> it's all voluntary. <laughs> you do a really good job explaining this. I appreciate it. Even as a presenter, you're helping me so much because I'm there to have a good time as well. So to know what all these beautiful options are and all of what to look forward to. And are we going to dress up for dinner? Are we going to get all glammed up or is well, it? Well, you can get glammed up if you want, but there's two nights where they have, I guess it's called dressy nights or uh, chic nights. I think they're calling on celebrity. There's always a different name on a different cruise line, but I think they call it chic night or something. She dressy night. I don't know. And that's when you can go all out. And, you know, when do you have the opportunity to put on a formal gown mm -hmm. or to put on even on a cocktail dress yes. and put, get all your bling out and dress up? It's so much fun. Oh, my God. I love it. I love dressy night. 
So there'll be two of those on the uh, on this particular sailing. And they have shops, don't they? You can they also do. they have yeah they have boutiques they have different shops you can go shopping. You know that might not be the most exciting thing, but right. a lot of exciting done, things you can do on a ship. I got an amazing. I've only done one cruise ever in my life, and it was probably fifteen years ago, um, and I bought such a gorgeous Swarovski heart. I mean, it's stunning. I still have it. I still wear it. And every time people stop me, so you can get some, I always look for those unique things I can't get anywhere else. As so a that's, matter of fact, yeah, right. on, on the cruise ship, they're going to have some very unique items. They have these really unusual handbags that are in different weird shapes, like guitars and all kinds of <gasps> shit, oh, different cool. shapes, handbags. They've got all kinds of blingy clothing. I have actually bought quite a lot of clothing on cruise ships. I admit it. Uh, also, they have, you know, sports wear. They have a bathing attire. If you forgot your bathing suit or whatever, they have cover-ups. They have dressy <laughs> outfits. They have casual outfits. Um, also, they have jewelry, as you said. They've got jewelry shops. They've got, uh, I, I remember I didn't bring a watch on one of my cruises and you need to have a watch oh. because um of the fact that your cell phone won't keep time on it uh, at sea notes. so i didn't have my watch so i went and bought a really nice watch on one of the cruises on the watch that i love so yeah shopping is fun too and also they even have art uh, they have an art gallery you can buy paintings and prints and things like that on every one of the cruise lines, they have that art auction. <laughs> Girls sold. And of course, they have regular type cruise type things. They have like Zumba class or they have bingo. Or they have different crafty things to do. There's there's a lot of things, but something I think for you'll be, everyone. You'll be kept busy in our conference center. We will have our own conference center on the ship. Oh, man. It will be a dedicated uh area dedicated meeting space for us only exclusive so in our meeting space that's where our lectures and different presentations from our wonderful speakers will be taking place and that's where the speaker vendors will be in that there will be yeah there also there'll be tables there isn't a separate vending space but there'll be tables that will be around the uh, edges of the room and uh and speakers who wish to sell their, their items can do so. Wonderful. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. I hope you're all chomping at the bit because I am. <laughs> you're good. You're good. It's so that, much fun. Oh you know all of this, but of course, you've been doing it since 2011. And I guess that's why everything you just said is why you keep going back and Absolutely. doing what you do. What fun. <laughs> and you get to travel. <laughs> For sure. And the particular area that we're going to, the Riviera Maya, you know, that's a very unusual place to travel to because of the ancient ruins, the ancient sites. So there's a specific vibration in these different sites. There's something very special about them. You'll feel the energy of the, the energy vortex in each one of these different pyramids, each one of these different locales. There's something unusual, something highly spiritual about them. And I have arranged these specific, uh, I've arranged these specific shore excursions to uh, help us to have that experience of the sacred, sacredness, the vortex, the energy there. And, and especially on the fire ceremony, you're going to love that. We're going to do that at a place called the Seven Color Lagoon, which is a very, very special place in Costa Maya that is uh, not only physically gorgeous, but it has a gorgeous vibration too. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I want to know all about you too now. So <laughs> Dr. Shumsky, explain in your bio was the word and it's your technique divine revelation which is a meditation technique how does that facilitate direct contact with the divine presence without using a middle man or middle woman middle energy yeah i mean 
Divine revelation is really about asking and receiving. It's based upon one principle, and that is ask and it shall be given unto you. So by asking, 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 and this is not repetitious. I'm not talking about chanting a mantra or chanting anything. It's just about an intention and a verbal command, if you want to say, or prayer or affir affirmative prayer, affirmation through using a specific affirmations and breathing, just taking really deep breaths, a simple breathing, nothing spectacular, no special pranayama or anything, but just taking deep breaths, you know, just and letting go. And every time you take a deep breath, you go deeper, you get quieter. And then asking, calling upon a divine being that you want to communicate with and asking and the intention of going deep, the intention of, of going into a deep meditative state and then being able to connect with spirit with a capital S and with specific deities, angels, archangels, divine beings, be able to communicate with them and have direct contact with them. And on the cruise, by the way, I'm going to be doing a, uh, I'll be doing a, a guided meditation workshop as one of my presentations. So you'll get the direct experience of that on the cruise. And that particular uh, meditation I'm going to be doing, I'm also going to be doing a method called table tipping. Table tipping. Now, it's not a seance, okay? <laughs> People want to hear table tipping. Oh, it must be a seance. Oh, they're going to talk to the dead. No, we're going to talk to the living. We're going to talk to divine living beings. Uh, so this uh, experience is a very profound connection with spirit, the capital S, and your higher self, and the divine beings of light, uh, ascended masters, angels, archangels. So that's what I teach. And come on a cruise, and you'll have the direct experience of it. <laughs> nice. I want to know what you personally have created using this method. I can say a lot about what I've witnessed with you. I think I've known you. I'm trying to remember. I've been doing radio and podcasts for 17 years. I don't know. Maybe you came on 14 years ago. And since, and obviously we go to the uh, Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo together every year. And I see you there. And I've, I've been at your workshops there. I know, I know your books. Um, and I loved one of your, a couple of years ago, you wrote a book and the forward was with Dr. Joe Vitale. And I thought it was so cool. Such a beautiful story. He was gushing about how he used to run with your book to get you to sign it. And he, <laughs> you were one of his original mentors and look at him now. So right. what have you created using divine revelation, Susan? Well, I've created a really cool life for myself. <laughs> I would say, you know, the 20 books, the 40 foreign books, the 46 book awards. Yeah, that's that's part of it. But also all the people who have benefited from mm -hmm. the techniques that I teach, particularly one of my books, Instant Healing, is a big hit <laughs> all over the world. And that's something where people say they carry it around in their purse. It's dog-eared. It's underlined, you know, with a liner, what do you call it? The Magic highlighter. Marker, yeah, yeah. yeah, highlighter. And, you know, and they, and they, and then it fell apart and they had to buy a new one. <laughs> so that particular book has been extremely helpful for people. It's instant healing. And instant healing is filled with affirmations, prayers, uh, and just inst to get instant results, okay? Using the power of speech to get instant results. So, you know, Buddha once said, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. And he also said, he went in the same verse, not only did he say all that we are is the result of what we have thought, I had to repeat that because it's really crucial. And he goes on to say, if a person speaks, 
or acts with a pure thought, then happiness follows him or her. If a person speaks or acts with an impure thought, then unhappiness follows him or her. So what he's saying there is that we are creating our destiny and our reality moment by moment, day by day, through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Three things, thoughts, words, and deeds. So when we speak an affirmation with conviction, we will have an instant upliftment, an instant change in consciousness, an instant result. And all of the affirmations that are in my books are incredibly powerful, incredibly effective. I'll just say one right now. That's my favorite. That is my go-to affirmation that can change your life instantly. And here it is. I am in control. I am the only authority in my life. I am am divinely protected by the light of my being, I close off my aura and body of light to the lower astral levels of mind, and I open to the spiritual world. Thank you, God. And so it is. And so it is. Oh, man. I really like the way you say that, too. You say it with authority. Yes, that's the way to say affirmations. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you embody it. And you have a free weekly teleconference called the Scientific Prayer Circle. What is that I about? I do, yeah. Every Saturday, I pray for people. People send me their emails or they do it or they just speak on the phone. And they tell me their prayer request, and I pray for people. And I've been doing that for decades. <laughs> I don't do it every Saturday for decades. <laughs> it's free. And people and can- on and, yeah, you can find the information on my Facebook page, oh, uh, which is just facebook.com, you know, Susan Shumsky. And every Friday, sometime on Friday, it'll be posted how to call in for the prayer circle. Nice. So that's how to do it. So this, um, but you also have a nine step scientific prayer method. Is that right? That's right. I do. And I wrote about that in a book called Miracle Prayer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't make this up. This is something that has uh, been around since the 19th century, actually. Uh, It is taught in religious science. They don't call it religious science anymore, but it used to be taught in the, um, in the, Uh, Church of Religious Science, and in the Church of Science of Mind, which is basically the same exact teaching, Ernest Holmes teaching, and they taught a specific prayer method called scientific prayer. And so I taught uh, that method in this book called Miracle Prayer. Also, it's taught in the Unity Churches as well, Unity Church of Christianity, which is a quite well-known church as well. And they teach affirmative prayer too. They don't teach the the so many steps of method, though it's not quite as elaborate. Uh, but I go into every step, nine different steps. So. Can you elaborate on a success story? Somebody you worked with, somebody who you taught this prayer method to, and what happened? Where they were at, and what happened during and after? Well, you know. <clears throat> There's uh, some people that attend my prayer circle every week that have said that every single prayer that I have done for them has given them miraculous results. I know that sounds impossible, but that's what they told me. And in fact, uh, one of the people that uh, was really in a desperate situation, she had a, a kind of an astral possession going on in her house. Her house, uh, her whole life was in chaos and she had poltergeist activity in her house. There were, you know, things were being knocked over, their windows were breaking, you know, it was very extreme. She had an extreme haunted house. And I taught her just a very simple affirmation to do and told her to use it. Um, In fact, I told her to do it a hundred times a day. In fact, I've told a lot of people who have entity possession or oppression either in their physical bodies or in their homes 
I have often given prescriptions to people to do it a hundred times a day. And they just think I'm out of my mind that they wouldn't, you know, who's going to do it a hundred times a day. Well, this woman did. And that astral possession disappeared. It was no longer there. Wow. Okay. Good success story. I find that stuff fascinating uh, that people can live through that successfully. I'm such a scaredy cat. I would I <laughs> like, nah, not that. Healthy. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, it's, you know, it's just a ghost. I mean, it's, it's, what's it going to do? So you just have to speak lovingly to that spirit who's obviously in pain. You know, this is a spirit who didn't go into the light after death. This is somebody who's trapped in the earth plane. And, you know, rather than making a television show about it, <laughs> oh, let's hunt the ghost. Let's find the, you know, that doesn't help the ghost. Instead, speak lovingly to the ghost mm -hmm. and explain to it that it needs to go into the light. It's really quite simple. So you would say an affirmation such as this. Dear one, you speak, you speak to the ghost itself. Dear one, you are healed and forgiven. You are lifted in love. You are united with the truth of your being. You are filled and surrounded with divine love. You are filled and surrounded with divine light. You are free from fear. You are free from pain. You are free from this earthly vibration. You are free to go into your perfect right place of expression. Go now in peace. Go into the light now. And then you could say some other after things. If you want, you could say something like this. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of the universal Christ. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of the universal Christ. You are blessed, forgiven, and released into the love, light, and wholeness of the universal Christ. You are lifted into the light of God. 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 Go now in peace. Go now in love. And guess what? We just healed an entity because there was one that we just healed. Wow. And you know what? That was even healing for me. I got it. I'm like in this incredible. That was it. There was, there was something that was around you and we healed it. And that's the reason why you're feeling different now. Incredible, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. So conversely then, how can people consciously communicate with deities, with angels, with ascended masters from various traditions? Are there practices or techniques that you recommend to foster these profound connections? You know, people, so many people, they sit down and meditate, right? Okay, I'm going to sit down and meditate. They close their eyes. Oh, uh, what's what am I going to make for breakfast? Oh, what am I going to make dinner? Oh, what's going to happen? Oh dear, I'm worried about my child. Oh, I'm worried about this. I'm, okay, that's not meditation. <laughs> so sitting and worrying about your troubles or whatever. Okay, so it's important that instead of just drifting off into a state where you're not getting anywhere. It's better to use a, what I call guided meditation, some form of guided meditation. Either you're guiding yourself or you're listening to an audio that's guiding you into meditation. And through the guided meditation, you can dialogue with spirit. You can ask questions and receive answers. If you want to communicate with divine beings, first of all, Call upon the divine being by name. It's like, Jesus, please come now. Or Buddha, please come now. Or Krishna, please come. Whoever you want to speak to, Mother Divine, uh, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, please come now. So first, you got to call on them. Ask them to come. And secondly, ask them something. <laughs> ask for Ask a question, ask for guidance, ask for inspiration. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Like I said in the beginning, everything that I teach is based upon one principle, ask and it shall be given unto you. So ask that divine being to come and then ask a question and then take a big deep breath because then you're going to do what I call the do nothing program. 
That means do nothing, nothing, and less than nothing. And when you do the do nothing program, then spirit will talk back to you because you'll be receptive to receiving whatever it is that's the answer to your question. So ask, breathe, and receive, you know, and it works. Nice. It works. Incorporate that into my morning practice. I love that. It, I know it's really powerful. I've done it in different ways through my shamanic lineage. Um, in shamanism, we've got the lower world, the middle world, the upper world, and I've gone to the upper world and lower world and and spoken what, with Huascar, who is the lord of the lower world, and Pachacutec, the lord of the upper world. And, you know, they're gender fluid, so they're not just one thing. But I've asked them, I've asked them, for help on things, I've connected with Mother Earth and asked her specifically um, for wisdom. And it's incredible the things I've received just by getting out of the way and allowing whatever is supposed to come forth to me to come forth, things I wouldn't have conceived of. Uh, usually I laugh because of course they make so much sense when I hear them, but they're very peaceful ways, very powerful ways to shift whatever's happening or for me to see something that I'm missing. So I will incorporate that. I like it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It works. <laughs> it's really powerful. Yeah. And, and I, I do have some guided meditations that you can, uh, that people can get on my website, drsusan.org. That's D-R-S-U-S-A-N dot O-R-G, drsusan.org. And hopefully it's showing up right now on the monitor. Uh, and um, yeah, you can go there and you can order. Uh, there's some downloadable meditations or it's on my order page on my website. And they are very helpful to help you to get into that deep meditative state. And I also have what's called a breakthrough meditation where you can actually uh, be taught. It's about it's a 70 minute meditation uh, and teaching where you will have what's called what I call the divine revelation breakthrough where you will um, learn how to listen to that inner voice. So that's available too. And a couple of my books specialize in that. One is called Divine Revelation, which was my first book published by Simon & Schuster. And then also um, another book that has similar information in it called Awaken Your Divine Intuition. Awaken Your Div Divine Intuition is sort of written like a workshop Whereas divine revelations written more like a book. <laughs> Amazing. You know, um, I want to talk about another book that you wrote, Maharishi and Me. I oh, saw yeah. recently you posted on social media this throwback picture of uh, you and several other people with the Maharishi. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing picture, really, kind of a reference point. What were some of the secrets, some of the methods that Maharishi Mahesh Yogi used that he did to work on his disciples, such as you at the time? Well, I don't know what methods he used on me, but I do know that he taught, um, he's the founder of Transcendental Meditation, which has actually become as generic as Kleenex, that name, Transcendental Meditation. But in fact, it is a specific method. And I was uh, in his ashrams for two decades and I was on his personal staff for six years. And uh, so he was teaching this method. And in fact, he trained 40,000 teachers to teach TM. And those teachers actually taught six million people to meditate during his lifetime so he he did quite a bit during his lifetime to spread uh, meditation and indian philosophy to the west yeah yeah and, I, I learned through one of those oh yeah meditators um unbelievable what an experience yeah and then to keep doing it like better 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 and more more results yeah i continued to do it until uh, 1989, when I learned this other method, divine revelation, and I was so impressed with that that I started teaching that rather than TM, rather than transcendental meditation. Wow, that has to be powerful. So, 22 years in his ashrams, 
right? And what was the turning point? What caused you to break away from Maharishi's guidance and find your own path? Well, when I when I learned this other method of divine revelation, uh, it was really um, it fulfilled a need that I had. I was already experiencing tr- the transcendent or the experience of samadhi. They call it samadhi, where you're in a state of deep peace, deep relaxation, wholeness, and oneness. A state of unbounded awareness, a state of perfection. And uh, it's a f- profound experience. And that's what I experienced through TM on a daily basis, you know, every day. However, what was missing from my, what I perceived as missing from my spiritual uh, practice, at the, later on I figured it out, <laughs> that what was missing was divine love. Mm. And through the method of divine revelation, I experienced that love of God's love. And that is a fantastic, wonderful. For me, that's what I needed. So I got that through divine revelation. So then I started teaching it. And after I was teaching it for a while, I realized no one's going to take me seriously unless I write a book. So I wrote Uh this book called Divine Revelation. And then then people started taking me more seriously, you know, especially when it got published by Simon & Schuster, which is a total miracle. Well, first time unknown author who knows nothing about writing, who went to art school, gets a book published by Simon Schuster. Sure. Right. But your methods speak for themselves, right? (laughs) How you create. So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. As someone who is such as myself, a book writing coach, the fact that you have gone on to continue to write and write and produce and produce, what drives you to do that? How much more is there for you to say and share? Or how do the ideas pop for you to keep writing your books? Yeah. um, So the thing is, I'll just, first of all, comment on something you said. And that is that when I uh, got my book published by Simon & Schuster, it wasn't manifestation. It was pure guidance it was being led by spirit in every step of the way it was surrender to spirit surrender to god listening to the divine voice following it trusting it and doing what it told me to do even though it seemed like it was crazy i continued to persist with this literary agent who had had dropped me and spirit kept saying no he's your agent don't sign with another agent don't try to sell the book yourself continued on and on and on, listening to guidance and following it. You know, it's great to get messages from spirit, to get guidance, but if you don't follow through, if you don't follow the guidance, it's worthless. So, you know, I followed the guidance and that's how I got got published by Simon & Schuster. So why did I continue writing? Well, because my publisher kept asking me to write more books, that's why. (laughs) Hmm. I always had a new idea of something they wanted me to write. Now, that wasn't true for my memoir, of course, Maharishi and Me, my memoir. And I did that because uh, there was a publisher that asked me to write that. There was an editor at a publishing house that asked me to write my memoir. So I did. And then she promptly uh, (laughs) uh, was fired or whatever. She no longer worked there. So it took, uh, I think, 25 or 30 years to get that book published. Finally, it did get published. That book, Maharishi and Me, uh, it has won 13 book awards. And it's uh, quite a popular book. But my latest book is called The Inner Light, How India Influenced the Beatles. And if I go down here, you can see that book right above my head. So (laughs) The Inner Light, How India Influenced the Beatles. I love this book. It's so fun. It is a book where each chapter is a song. And then the song, I explain the lyrics. I explain the Indian influence on that song. I explain the Indian philosophy behind it. I explain the musicians, Indian musicians, Indian musical instruments. It's got 170 very rare photographs in that book. It's got 130 QR codes that point to really great content, video and audio. That It's a trip. That book is fantastic. It's got 512 pages and it is 
really amazing. If you're a Beatles fan, anyone out there who's a Beatles fan, you're going to love this book. It's Are, awesome. do, you, do you feel like you still have more? Like you're not done? You like, you're not. There is a book I want to write. I don't know if it'll ever get written. No, I, I've tried to sell it several times. I've never been successful at it. But if I ever get into the right frame of mind and if I write the right proposal for it, it might get published. Mm. You have this we'll 10, 10 test spiritual discernment system. And how does that play into this process of creation? What is it? How is it used? The discernment process, the 10 te tests of spiritual discernment, that is for testing the inner voice that you're receiving. Okay, so you're receiving inner guidance, right? You're asking for messages to come to you and the messages are coming to you. And how do you know that it's real? How do you know that it's really your higher self speaking to you? Is it an entity from the astral world? Is it a faker spirit trying to fake you out? Is it your own mind playing tricks on you? Who, is give, who or what is giving you that message? So the 10 tests of spiritual discernment can help you to tell the difference between the true, actual, real voice of spirit and other voices in your mind to test whether the message is the real thing. So that's, um, that is in a couple of my books. The 10 tests are in Awaken Your Divine Intuition, they're also in Divine Revelation, and I believe they're also in uh, Awaken Your Third Eye, which is another book about developing intuition. And what is your take on experiencing ascension right now? How, yeah, yeah talk a little bit about that. Okay, I wrote a book called Ascension. And my book Ascension is about ascended masters and immortal beings of light. So the book is about transforming your physical body into a light body and becoming an ascended master yourself. So part of the book is te techniques for ascension, techniques for transforming this physical body into a light body and living in an immortal body of light. And then uh, the, the rest of the, most of the book is stories about immortal beings so that you know that it's possible. And not just the usual suspects like Jesus and St. Germain and Mother Mary, and uh, just the, those would be the usual suspects, really. Um, maybe somebody like um, Bulbatsky's teachers, you know. But um, also very rare ascended beings from all over the world, not just the Far East and not just um, the Middle East or whatever, <laughs> Jesus, but from, from America, uh, from China, from India, from all different cultures and places where immortal beings have come and live and are still alive to this day. So it's quite a fascinating book. Now, a lot of people today, the popular buzzword is ascension and the fifth dimension and whatever. Okay, a fifth dimension, that's still a dimension. That's not beyond dimensions. I mean, okay, fifth dimension, one, two, three, four. Five, whatever. So, and then there's this, the ascension, the ascension. Oh, all of us are going to ascend at once and the earth is going to ascend. I, I promise you that's not going to happen. I, I can, I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. The earth is not going to suddenly burst into a ball of light unless a, an asteroid hits it or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whatever you're thinking about is a fantasy. But there are, I know, I sound like a fantasy when I'm talking about immortal beings. I sound crazy, right? But there are immortal beings. There are beings who have attained ascension, who have become immortal, mm -hmm. but they're individuals. It's not like a group of, you know, it's not like a whole world. Do you think that, you know, the crazy people who are warring against each other right now are now going to ascend into, I mean, what, what? That's not going to happen. And do you have any tips for people uh, to do this so that uh, they can do this with ease and who they might reach out to? Now they have your discernment technique. How can they actually um, make this kind of connection with Ascended Masters? 
Uh, it's really not hard to do. I gave you the secret already. <laughs> but you can read my books and um and you could also get a guided meditation online if you wish. Uh, so like I said, the books that I recommend for learning to listen to the divine voice are Awaken Your Divine Intuition. Um, and I would really recommend that because it's written like a course. It's like a workshop. So you can take the workshop by <laughs> reading the book, Awaken Your Divine Intuition. And most of my books are on audio. Almost every one of my books is on audio. And yes. almost every one of my books is on Kindle. So you don't have to get the big fat book if you don't want. But in the case of The Inner Light, How India Influenced the Beatles, I really recommend that you get the at least the Kindle so that you can use you know, Kindle or the actual physical book so you can use the QR codes and also see all the photos, amazing pictures. And by the way, my book, Maharishi and Me, the autobiography, my memoir, that book also has tons of rare photos in it mm. as well. Nice. Can now I don't now, know. Now I don't I have to put a caveat here because I was making fun of the ascension. But the reality is that the this earth that we are living on, this paradise that we are living on, is going through a transition. And the vibratory rate of this planet, mm. the spiritual vibratory rate is being raised. It is getting higher. So we are in a sense ascending we are going into a higher vibration vibrational atmosphere on this planet but it's not like we're going to suddenly go <laughs> up into a, those spaceships or or we're going to just instantly go into a light or something like that happening individuals are becoming higher consciousness one Definitely. by one and waking and individuals up. are what's make what makes up a society individuals are what makes up a world so as we individually raise our vibrational level which people are doing everywhere we are becoming a more gentle more loving planet i know it doesn't look like it right now with the wars going on but in the overall we are that vibration is raising and I do have an optimistic viewpoint about the planet and where it's going. I Very do. optimistic. Yes. It's going into a higher vibration and there is more love on this planet. Beautiful. Yeah. And do you do privates anymore or are all your teachings done through groups? I do private sessions mm. and you can, you can uh, register for one on my website, but there are prerequisites. You have to read one of my books that is specifically for the breakthrough session. That's the only session that I do uh, privately for beginners is the breakthrough divine revelation breakthrough session. And you're welcome to sign up for that on my website. Beautiful. Thank you, Susan. Um, I have just a few more questions. I want to ask you again about the cruise galactic origins, cruise.com. You mentioned what you're going to be presenting and um, can you give people just a quick flavor of what their experience will be like doing one of these since you are such a pro at it? Well, I mean, the cruise is going to go real smoothly and you're going to have a really great time. I promise you that. <laughs> and you're going to be led and taught by some really amazing speakers. And the particular theme of this cruise is Galactic Origins. So we have a lot of star seeds that are going to be on this uh, particular cruise. So I think there'll be a lot of experiences. It'll be a, very experiential. It won't just be people, you know, blah blah blobbing on the on the on the platform. They will be guiding you into experiences, and I think that'll be a, something that's very enriching and something that will you can take home. Uh, something that really is transformational for you. Um, I'll be doing two presentations. One, as I said before, is a table tipping and guided meditation thing uh, where I'm going to be, a table is going to be moving. <laughs> but it really, you know, it's not a seance. Like I said, it's, it's sort of, it's like a dowsing tool. 
it's like using a pendulum or a L rod or a Y rod. It use it. I use a table for that purpose. And I'll also be teaching uh, the inner light how India influenced the Beatles. I'm going to be doing a Beatles presentation. <laughs> Galactic Origins of the Beatles, I think I'm calling it. <laughs> That's great. That'll be oh, fun. It'll be fun. an audio vid visual presentation. Mm. And uh, you'll, you're will you going to learn a lot about the Beatles music and about their, their lyrics that you never knew before. If you are interested in the Beatles, you're going to love this presentation. Mm. And then we have these uh, awesome teachers like Desiree and J.J. Hurtak, like Jerry Sargent, who's an amazing healer like Laura Eisenhower, who teaches about feminine energy. And she also teaches about uh, cons some conspiracy things. And uh, she's fantastic. She's a wonderful speaker. And, uh, but you got to listen to her fast because she talks fast. And <laughs> she does. <laughs> have Debbie, Debbie Dashinger, who's going to be teaching. And so many of these speakers just go to Galactic Origins cruise.com galactic origins cruise.com and scroll down and then you can click on the speakers pictures and when you click on the pictures you'll see the workshops they're going to teach so you get a complete preview of what's going to be taught before you register mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, Dr. Shumsky, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I dare to dream some fantastic cruises coming up next year. I've got one with such a stone going to the Mediterranean and Egypt. I've got uh, some other ones that are behind the scenes that I can't announce yet. <laughs> that I'm daring to dream about them. <laughs> Beautiful. Anything you want to say here at the end that we haven't covered? What I want to say is trust your own inner guidance. Trust your own intuition. Learn how to listen to that inner voice within you. It will never steer you wrong. When you know that it's real, when you know that it's true, when you know that it's truly the voice of God and not some other bogus voice that's leading you down some rabbit hole in the wrong direction, when you know that it's really the divine voice, that it's truly your higher self speaking to you, trust it and follow it. Don't just you know, fantasize and think about how nice it is to be in this lovely transcendental state of awareness. When you're guided, when you ask questions, practical questions about your everyday life, and you receive guidance, you receive the answers, you receive the warnings, you receive the blessings, you receive whatever it is that spirit is telling you, follow it, do it, act on it, <laughs> act, you know, don't just dream about it, think about it, act on it, do what you're guided to do. It's not easy to follow inner guidance. It's not an easy path. It's very difficult because people around you are going to tell you you're out of your mind. They're going to say, what, do you, what, do you, what makes you think you can get a book published? What makes you think you're so smart? Don't listen to the naysayers. Listen to God. Listen to your inner voice. Listen to your higher self and trust it. Follow it. Don't be lazy. Do it. Yes. Be stronger <laughs> than your excuses. Thank oh, you good. so much for coming on the show. Thank you for everything you offered to us today. Dr. Susan Shumsky, much appreciated. Thanks for inviting me, Debbie. I Anytime. had a great time. And again, her website, drdrsusan.org. And the cruise is galacticoriginscruise.com. And I end today's show with this quote from Dr. Susan Shumsky. I now bless everyone, everything, and every situation in my life now as good, good, and very good. Every moment is a miracle. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. A reminder, leave comments. I love hearing from you. I do read them all. And next week on the podcast, I am speaking once again with psychic lawyer, Mark Anthony, world famous, been on every TV show. 
This guy is amazing. He's so articulate and bright. But we're going in a different direction next week. Mark and I are speaking about secret UFO extraterrestrial information. And I can't wait to go there with him. So join us. Also join us in the Galactic Origins Cruise, galacticoriginscruise.com. Susan and I cannot wait to meet you, have dinner with you, hang out with you. And remember the end of the show here, exactly what she said, how she made her book come to be by listening, asking, breathing, asking, receiving, and then acting on the guidance she received, even though logically it made no sense, but she got published by Simon & Schuster and then has had a life of incredible awards for her books and success. You can too.